Hey everyone, it's Savannah from Savvy in Space, and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is my first video, and if you can't tell, I'm a little bit nervous, but that's okay, we'll get through this. I wanted to do a introductory get ready with me, so you can get to know me a little bit and hear about why I wanted to make this channel in the first place, and uh, see me put on some makeup. I think today I'm going to do just a simple, sort of my classic everyday go-to look, which is actually <laughs> not quite right because I'm one to wear a lot of colorful shadow, but if I'm going for something a little more work appropriate, or a little more toned down, this is typically what I reach for. So I am an undergraduate student at uh, a Southern University, and I'm going to be a senior coming up in the fall. Um, I'm going in with the ELF Luminous Putty Primer. Um, Sorry, you can hear the car in the background. It's okay. I study astrophysics, and it has been my passion since I was a very, very little girl. I remember one of my first memories is being held up to a telescope in the backyard, and uh, my my dad showing me the rings of Saturn, and I could see it with my own eyes, and it was is everything I ever wanted. And I feel like I feel so blessed to be able to study this. Currently, I'm a summer student intern at the NRAO, the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, which is uh, headquartered in Charlottesville. But of course, due to the COVID-19 crisis, I'm not doing it in Charlottesville. I'm doing it remotely from my home here. Um, I'm going to go in with my favorite combination of foundations, the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear in 415 and the Photofocus uh, Wet n Wild Foundation, uh, the Dewy Finish in shade Shell Ivory. It's a great combination between these two. Just enough coverage. I usually just mix about half and half on the back of my hand and apply it. So yeah, I work at the NRAO as a summer student. I work under the mentorship of several staff scientists who have been there for quite a while. I work with an amazing team and I'm so lucky to have them and to have them mentor me. I learned so much. And every day I, um, I meet with my mentors, I go to lectures and meetings and kind of do normal internship work. Um, I work with data reduction and calibration of radio images. So that at first sounds like a little bit of an oxymoron, like radio images. You know, isn't radio the thing that you listen to in your car? It's not a picture, you know? Uh, and that's the really cool thing about astronomy, is that we are able, uh, since the beginning of the 1900s, we've been able to look out at our universe, not at the wavelengths just available to us at our, uh, that are visible with our eyes. That's actually called the optical band, and that is an extremely narrow range, actually. So we can see a whole lot more as astronomers than we can with our naked eye. Not just in more detail, but stuff that would be completely invisible to us otherwise. I'm just pressing this into the skin, making sure we're all blended. I poured out too much on my hands, so we're gonna have extra. Um, I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I think this is shade C3, no, Light Peach. Just gonna put a little bit on and kind of as an eye primer as well. So the way that <laughs> looks funny, the way that light works, right, is it's divided up into what we call the electromagnetic spectrum, which ranges from very low energy light, very low energy radiation, to very high energy radiation, very high energy light. The lowest category of light or electromagnetic radiation that we have is called the radio wavelength. Um, then the next highest level is microwave, then infrared, then optical, then UV, then X-ray, and then gamma rays. And if you are ever told that radiation will hurt you, like from the 5G towers or anything, just a quick aside, don't listen to them. <laughs> Only ionizing radiation, which is X-rays and above, can damage human tissues. So when I say radiation, don't worry about it being such a dangerous thing. You know, the light that's coming at me that allows you to see me, you know, that's that's radiation. That's that's what I mean by radiation. I just mean that's another form of light. I don't mean um, 
anything dangerous. When we talk about radiation from like radioactive elements, that's nuclear decay, and that is a bit different. And that is something you can worry about. <laughs> um, anyway, so I work with the very lowest energy light that exists. And it's weird saying light because we think of light as things we can see. We don't think as of heat as light, right? You know, normally when you touch something warm, you don't think, oh, that's bright, right? You just feel the heat. Well, actually, the heat is caused by uh, electromagnetic radiation or light waves that occur in the infrared spectrum. So it just means any sort of anything that's warm, anything that's bright, or anything more energetic than that. It's really fascinating. I hope to do further episodes a little bit more clearly and covering in more detail on the electromagnetic spectrum. Also, I'll have links linked down below um, to give you some introductory readings. Or for those of you who have maybe a physics background, um, I'll also link some um, more detailed uh, astronomical uh, sources for you guys. I'm just going in with the ELF putty primer. Um, and this is in the shade Nude. Love it. So the way that light works is it functions as both a wave and a particle, which is something that was discovered in the, in the 1900s. And it was, uh, quite frankly, a very big deal that this was discovered. And this was actually the beginning of quantum physics. Um, anyway, so we can think of light as light waves, or we can think of light as photons. Photons are like individual little packets of light. They're like the smallest um, particle of light that you can get. So like if you wanted to take one light, for example, I know that's not like how we say it, but if you wanted to take one light, that would be one photon. And photons have a certain amount of energy, and that corresponds to their frequency and their wavelength. Um, things that have a higher frequency will have a lower wavelength. So for example, gamma rays. Those have very high energy, very high frequency, but a very small wavelength. And then in at the opposite of the electromagnetic spectrum, we have the radio, which is low energy, low frequency, but long wavelengths. And yes, radio still does refer to um, what we use to communicate. So you can, if you want to, you can think of the source that I'm looking at. It's not coming off as bright with light, but you could think of it as um, a radio signal. Uh, you know, it's sound, if you will. I think that's pretty cool. All right, um, what should I do next? Should we do our face first or should we do the eyes? Mm, I'm going to go in with the face first. So I'm going to take my uh, Too Faced Cocoa Contour Palette that I got in the BoxyCharm. Love them. Love BoxyCharm. And I'm just going to go in with the, um, the light and medium shades and mix them together on my cheeks and on my forehead. Um, I'm using a Sephora brush that I got I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago and it's still holding up really well. I love this. It's just a a nice fluffy brush, yeah. So as a summer student, what I look at are not just astronomical sources in general that are in the radio wavelength, but in particular, I look at galaxies. Um, and even more specific than that, I look at what are called, wait for it, ultra luminous infrared galaxies, or as we call them, ULERGs. <laughs> Uh, uh, astronomers love acronyms. You'll see a lot of those. <laughs> and a lot of these galaxies, they're famous because they're very hot. They're very bright in um, the wavelengths, IR wavelengths, that we normally consider as heat. And a lot of them, um, a, a good chunk of them, a decent fraction, are in peculiar and interacting galaxies. So they're not isolated galaxies. They are galaxy systems, galaxies that are interacting with each other, uh, which is always more interesting than one, right? You know, uh, two is better than one. It's always more interesting to study uh, entire galaxies that are interacting with each other. I, I, I know it's silly, but I like to think of them as talking to each other. <laughs> You know, like the spiral arms reach out and they shake hands and where they shake hands is like where star enhanced star formation takes place. That's a whole other story that I'll um, hopefully get to in another episode. Um, I'm going to go in with my Detasha Denona uh, Daria blush palette. I got this on sale and I'm so, so glad I did. I got it for half off. It is just beautiful. I really wanted them when they first came out, but ain't nobody got $89 for a face palette. So when I picked it up for half that, 
I was so excited. I got this, and then when it came and I tried it, I wore heavily blushed looks for, like, the next three weeks, and then I went and bought the other one. <laughs> so I'm just going to take the powder blush shade from here. And again, on that same just um, Sephora brush that I have. The particular galaxy that I'm studying this summer is called, or galaxy system, galaxy pair, is called NGC 5331. And I'll make sure to pop up a picture here. Um, and it is beautiful. In fact, I think it looks a little bit like a clam. If you guys can see, it's got that bottom part and the top part that look like they're you know, opening like in the way that a clam does. I love it. Okay, for my eyes, I'm gonna go in with my Gimme Glow palette. This gigantic um, palette, I bought the empty palette itself for only $10, what an amazing deal. And I've got my Gimme Glow um, Indie Brand Singles in here. These are some of my favorite shadows I have ever used. I really hope to be able to get even more shades. Um, I'm gonna go in with the shade uh, Cupcake and the shade, I believe I'll go in with well, I'm not going to say the name of this shade, actually. It's Sweet I Itch. There we go. I'm <laughs> going to go in with that shade also uh, to deepen up the crease. And for my lid shade, I believe I'll do this light pink, which is called, what, Wednesday. Oh, you can't see it. Yeah. Just a simple work-appropriate look. And for neutrals, I way prefer pink tones over uh, normal bronze or... Um, you know, more brownie tones. I just like it the way it looks better with my hair and my eye color and everything. All right. Um, for my brush, I'm just going to take this really old tapered blending brush that I got in Ipsy. I don't even know how many years ago, but it's a great quality brush and it's just, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it's nice and fluffy. Just a very simple blending brush. Picking up some product, and I'm just going to pack this all in the crease. And one thing I like to do in particular, because um, I think it's very complementary of my eye shape, is to um, focus the shadow on this part here that connects my eyebrow to like sort of this bridge of my nose right here. It acts sort of like a little bit of a nose contour for you, and I think it's very flattering. You see the difference? You see how it adds that depth there compared to the eye that it doesn't have it on? I love it. One thing that um, I look at in my galaxy is I look at how bright this galaxy is at different wavelengths. So you know how like you can tune to different radio channels and um, they've got like those slightly different numbers. You know, they say like, um, I don't know, 98.1 megahertz, right? And then another one might be uh, 102.7. Well, those are different frequencies. And by doing the exact same thing um, with our radio telescopes, we are able to um, garner different kinds of information about the galaxies. So I look at a broad range of um, radio wavelengths. It's literally like tuning the tuner on your car and just looking at the different images that would uh, or the different signals that you receive at the different um, frequencies. Um, and I try to see how it varies. Um, you know, at higher frequencies, is it brighter? At higher frequencies, is it duller, you know? Now, the galaxy that I have is called an uh, ultra-luminous infrared galaxy. So I also have access to infrared data, though that's not um, the specialty of the uh, organization I work with, right? I work with the National Radio Astronomy, uh, Obser Astronomy Observatory. Um, but yeah, it's super bright in the infrared, hence the name, ultra-luminous infrared galaxy. How does that look? Oh, that looks cute. Yeah, I like this. I do this as an everyday look pretty often. Oh, I'm just going with a Juvia's Place smaller blending, tapered blending brush and putting it, packing it on the out, outside corner and then sort of pulling it through my crease a little bit. You know, you know the drill. Now, the telescopes that um, I use data from, no, I will say, oh, this is probably an important point to bring up. Astronomers, they don't really, most astronomers don't handle 
going out and collecting the data for themselves. So most astronomers don't sit there with a telescope. Most astronomers rely on observatories and observatory staff to collect their information for them. So you basically write this letter and you say, can I please use your telescope to take a picture? Will you take a picture of this for me? And you know they judge it based on its scientific merit and decide whether or not it's worth it and whether it, uh, the results might be worth the money. And they say, yes, you, can, uh, you know, we'll take that picture for you. You know, we'll, we'll gather that data for you. So the telescopes that I have data from are called the Very Large Array, the VLA. I know um, maybe you guys haven't seen this movie, but it's an older movie called Contact based on a book written by Carl Sagan. And um, in that movie, the Jodie Foster, the main character, you know, she goes out and she has, uh, you see her in the desert with all of these gigantic um, antennae. And that's actually the VLA. That's, so that's the same telescope that I work with. And that movie is what really inspired me to become an astronomer in the first place. So I think it's really fitting that my very first job as an astronomer, as an astrophysicist, is working with the VLA, which was what inspired me in the first place. I also work with data from another radio telescope down in uh, Chile called ALMA, um, the Atacama, oh geez, do I know, do I know what it stands for? Again, we always have so many acronyms in ASTRO that a lot of times we don't even know what they stand for, we just know what it is based on the acronym. All right, going in with this lit sheet here. Do, do, do. Um, I'm just going to go with my finger. This is how I normally apply shimmers, so I'm just going to do how, it, how, it, uh, how I normally do, you know? I just want you guys to, I wanted to say hi to you guys and introduce myself. Um, tell you a little bit about what I do, you know? I watch a lot of makeup videos. <laughs> it is definitely a hobby of mine um, that provides me with a lot of joy, you know? I love doing makeup, I love collecting makeup. I love watching makeup videos, and I particularly like watching Get Ready With Me. And I, the other thing I like to watch while I'm doing my makeup is science videos. So I thought, well, what if someone did them both at the same time? So here I am trying to make that happen. We'll see how it goes. All right, so I've just packed that shimmer on my lid. I don't want to foil it too much because, again, just a work day, but... I don't know how, how, how well you guys can see. Let me try to scoot you in a little bit closer. I don't know if you can see, but you know, that's not sprayed or anything. That's just loosely packed with the finger. I think it's absolutely stunning. Um, I'm gonna go in and just do the exact same thing on my lower lash line now. Um, same shades, um, sort of buff out the cupcake shade, transition shade, and um, line it a little bit with the sweet itch shade. These mats are so easy to work with. Um, to do a little bit of um, smudging on the bottom, I'm going in with a, another GVS Place brush. Um, I love this thing. You can see it's just a little bitty shade of brush. And I, I just start on the outer corner and I like connect the shadow that I have, um, the dark here, I connect it down and around, usually to just about my iris. It's currently the, well, I guess, oh, wow, the middle of July, and I only have about a month left um, of work at this internship, and I'm so upset. I wish it could last forever. I just have so much fun with it. All right, guys, I'm going to hop off real fast, pop on um, a simple winged liner and mascara. For a liner, I'm going to be using my uh, Kat Von D dagger liner. I usually pick up the uh, the normal tattoo liner, but this one was on sale, so of course I bought this one. It works pretty much just as well. And then for lashes, I'm going to be using the Lily Lashes Triple X Mascara, the one that was also set in the boxy charm. So hold on real fast, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, I've got my liner and mascara on, and here's what the finish, just like cute little 
girl next door everyday little look going. I really like it. I like how it turned out. Um, for highlight now, I'm going to go back into my Natasha Denona Daria palette, and I'm going to apply just a little bit, of course, again with my finger, of the, um, the cream glow base just on my cheekbones and a little kind of on top of where I put my blush. I like to spread this out a whole lot more. Um, I like, I, regardless of what formula I'm using, I love layering um, cream highlights underneath my powder highlights, and I like to spread them out a lot farther and then more have a more pinpointed application of my powder highlight. And of course, a little on the nose. <laughs> Okay, uh, for highlighting brush, I'm going to take this one that I got from Kaleidos when I purchased their duochrome slash multichrome highlighters. Great brush. It's a little fluffy, but, you know, I'm working with it. I'm learning how to use a little bit of a fluffier brush. I'm going to go into the, um, the Glow Extreme and just put a little of that right on the tippy tops of my cheekbones. So I want to know, what kind of videos would you guys want to see? What kind of questions about astronomy do you have? What kind of objects do you want to know about? Do you want to do, do you want me to do just makeup videos and then some just astronomy videos? Do you like this combination? Let me know down in the comments. Um, one thing I was thinking about doing next was talking about black holes. I can also talk about exoplanets, so planets outside our solar system, if anyone's interested. I can talk about galaxies, stars, neutron stars, any topic that you guys are interested in. Um, I'd love to be able to educate a little bit and just have fun talking about what I love while doing what I love. All right, <laughs> I'm gonna go in now on my for my lip liner and I'm gonna go in with Shot Clock by ColourPop. I'm so on the ColourPop bandwagon. These lip liners are so creamy and they last forever. And I always, I tend to overline just a tad on the bottom. If you guys are looking for a really good lip lining tutorial, there's one that Snitchery does. It's so good. I'll definitely make sure to have um, different levels of resources listed down in the comments below so you guys can do some reading on what I talked about. <laughs> so cute. I'm always tempted to just leave it like this. <laughs> All right, what am I going to do for lipstick? Did I bring lipstick down? Let's see what I got. Oh, shoot. All right, I'm going to go grab a lipstick. Be right back. Okay, I've got my e.l.f. Seriously Satin Lipstick in Taffy. I believe these are $2.99 and they rival my top lipsticks. I've got like a top lipstick drawer that contains all of my, um, well, all of my favorites, but most of them wind up being, you know, lipsticks that run you over 20 bucks. But this one is at the very top of my list and it runs you $3. It's so good. It's the Seriously Satin and it's in the shade Taffy. If you like more of a nude and less of a pink nude, go for the shade Nectar. That one's also really good. All right, there we go. What else do we need? Oh, I guess we just need some setting spray and we're good. I'm gonna set my face with my Urban Decay All Nighter. I love this stuff, can't get enough. All right, so that's me. I am an astrophysics student who absolutely loves doing makeup and loves studying the stars. And I'd love to build a community here, build a community of, um, especially curious young girls who might be interested in getting into a STEM field. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what kind of videos you want to see. Follow me down on Instagram and on um, Twitter down in the comments. And thank you. I'll see you later. Bye.